Good afternoon. You know, I, I thought that hurting faculty was difficult, but try college presidents and members of the legislature to get them all convened at the same time. Welcome. We really appreciate all of you coming today. Um, we've got a real uh, cast of, I think, significant leaders uh, with us today at the day house and sitting behind me. They include Dave Eisler, we're David from Ferris, Dr. Tom Haas beside me, Grand Valley, Dr. John Dunn to my left from Western, uh, Rich Pappas right beside me at Davenport. Uh, representing business and industry, we've asked uh, Fred Keller from Cascade to be with us today, Jim Fisher, who has been providing leadership with the local 2025 effort in this region, and I've asked Mike Hansen to join us uh, representing the Michigan Community College Association. And also, and it's um, tickled that they could come. We have four members of the legislature with us. Uh, Bob Gentusk. Janeski, I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> if I could just read my writing, I'd really be in good shape. Uh, Ken Yoker, Roy Smith, and uh, Brandon Dillon are with us today representing uh, our local delegation. Uh, let me say that uh, I am just always somewhat overwhelmed with the level of cooperation and collaboration that I experience in my presidency at Grand Rapids Community College. The, agreement that we are going to sign today as college presidents represents an outgrowth of one of the initiatives that we're presently pursuing through our work with the 2025 committee, and that is to raise the number of credentialed workers in this region of Western Michigan. And, and this really became part of a brainstorming exercise of determining do we have really in some ways low-hanging fruit, people that have earned credentials, but we have not found a way to recognize those people. And in fact, when we ran the numbers here at Grand Rapids Community College, we found that in the last three years, 7,000 students have transferred to one of these four fine institutions rep represented by the presidents that are with us today. And of those 7,000, 3,000 and about 200 left us having earned 45 degree credits or greater, leaving them with, with 15 or less credits needed to actually have an associate degree conferred upon them. Uh, so this group of presidents got pretty busy with their staff saying, we need to make this happen. And in fact, uh, we are working with staffs at the other four institutions to design processes where actually the institutions will be identifying these students for us. It would have been very difficult for us to try to figure out who these students are, but by using their degree audit programs, we can quickly find out who's earned those additional 15 credits and we can in fact bestow a degree upon them. Uh, we think this is a win-win-win. It's a, clearly a win for our students. Clearly, it's a win for this region as, it is, as we talk about and think about workforce development and skill development. And then I, I guess I'm, I'm very proud of the win that I think we represent as college presidents in the business community, that when you put your heads together in Western Michigan, good things always happen. And I think this is one of those really good things. And if we could, I'd ask uh, Mr. Keller, Fred, if you would like to react to this program and some of your thoughts as far as representing the employers of our region. You bet. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for the presidents for being here and for doing this kind of work. It's a, uh, you know, I, I want to set the stage a little bit. The, the employers of the region are absolutely in need of identifying the credentials of incoming and those who are in our workforce to understand what they know, what they, what they need to be working on, and what their lifelong learning plans are. We, we certainly mm -hmm. talk in terms of degrees, but it is a, a, all about the, the individual students, the individual employees, and what their lifelong learning plans are. We need to be able to figure out how we can have a, a continuum of education happening throughout our organizations. This is an increasing need for, for employers. There are well over 400 employers in Western Michigan right now uh, who are uh, supporting the idea of the National Career Readiness Certificate, which is a, 
a certificate that uh, uses the work keys tests that are currently given in every uh, uh, high school uh, throughout Michigan and identifies the level of, of, of need in the jobs that are, are available and in, helps them then wherever they are in those, in those credentials improve to the point where they can advance within the organization or we know where to place them in the organization as incoming uh, applicants. So the, the need for credentials is absolutely essential. It is hand in glove for our future de uh, development as, uh, as employers. And this is not just manufacturing as, as we are in, uh, but it's also in the, the healthcare collaborative and other areas th throughout West Michigan. A broad need for improving our credential systems in general. Uh, the, the idea that in manufacturing, for instance, we are seeing not a, uh, uh, we are, I'll put it in the positive, we are seeing a, an increasing need for jobs with credentials and a decreasing need for jobs that do not. Uh, th and that's, that's an understatement. It is important for us uh, in the new manufacturing world to have very well-educated employees. And we're very excited about this kind of work that you're doing because this absolutely sets the bar for future uh, uh, collaboration between employers and, and, and educators, and we need to be able to move this along as we are doing with the Talent 2025 program. That's an effort for us to listen, understand, uh, understand the issues, be able to, uh, be able to have uh, an accountability partnership that is uh, second to none, and, and where we're not uh, uh, pointing fingers or, t or, or, or taking directions or anything else, but it's a matter of trying to understand and move the, the, uh, the needle forward for West Michigan as an economic development package. So we're very pleased and very happy to be seeing what's happening here today. And I'm, I'm thrilled that what happened uh, as a matter of, of uh, uh, convening some folks together and being able to ask the question of how can we help, how can we support, how can we make this, this, uh, this effort to move, and the numbers are quite staggering, we have about 11% of our workforce currently has some sort of certificate uh, or, or a, uh, uh, an associate's degree, and we need to move that to 30% uh, if we're going to have real advancement in this community. That's our target by 2025. About 23% of our workforce in general has four-year baccalaureate degree or better, and we need to move that to 30%. We have a lot of work to do in this region, and this is a great step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mike Hanson, would you like to... Well, I, I would, first of all, like to thank Dr. Ender and the rest of the presidents for uh, coming together to create an agreement like this. Um, as many of you know, Michigan is a, a non-system state, and a lot of people think we can't get anything done, therefore, because we don't have a higher education system. But I think collaborative and, and cooperative uh, arrange, arrangements like this prove otherwise, that, that really uh, with leadership and, and wanting to do the right thing, we can forge um, new direction and, and positive things for our students. And also I'd like to recognize Representative Janetsky, who sits on the Community College Subcommittee Chair, who saw this as a potential model here in West Michigan to be included and transferred now to the rest of the state. And he's got language that he supported in our bill to encourage the other community colleges and other universities to do similar arrangements and agreements like this. And we plan on using this as a model and as a benchmark to help make this go statewide. So thank you to Representative Janetsky for that work. What I'd like to do, we actually have a couple of students with us today that can quickly take advantage of uh, these relationships. and. I'd like to give them an opportunity to speak, and then I'd ask my presidential colleagues if they'd like to make a comment. And I'm saving the best for last. Uh, members of the legislature, kind of your reaction to what you're seeing here today and your sense of how this could be helpful for our state. So our two students, I've got Michael Boss. Michael, if you would come up. And also Payman Abkinari. Yes, did I get it right? Please. Yes. Uh, just your reactions to this program. Yes, I think this program is awesome. I, when I was contacted about this, I thought it was an excellent opportunity uh, for me. For instance, on my resume right now, I am a GRCC student who transferred to Ferris. Now I can put on the credential that I obtained an associate's degree from Grand Rapids Community College and then a bachelor's degree from Ferris. So it's an excellent opportunity for students like me. Thank you. 
Um, thank you for just uh, giving opportunity to us to just have more credential. And I think that's a really good idea because we're gonna have uh, more opportunity for uh, in, in future for the jobs and uh, even in other and other fields if we just, I'm gonna be nuclear medicine technology, but I'm thinking about another students, maybe they don't work in their field so they can have maybe uh, better just uh, solution, uh, better selections to have good job in the uh, West Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now reactions, comments from the president's with us today. Dave, you want to just work around? Well, th thank you. Thank you, President Ender. And I think as we come together today, we need to recognize the leadership that President Ender had in this. This, is, this was an idea that he promoted to our group, and we're grateful to him for his leadership. Also, I'm grateful to you for being here because your support for this program helps pre make people aware of what we're trying to do here. Now, I know there were people at GRCC and at Ferris who both worked to identify the two students that we identified today. So if you'd stand up so we could recognize you, the folks at GRCC and Ferris who worked on this. <laughs> we'll look forward to many, many more students receiving this degree. We have a wonderful partnership with Grand Rapids Community College. We teach over 2,000 students on this campus every single day where students don't even have to walk across the street to, to get their degree with us. And this is a way that we can extend that partnership when I think about John and Tom and Steve and Rich, you know, they're, they're, they're more than colleagues, they're, they're friends of ours. And we're working together to help students here in West Michigan because that's what higher education is about. Thanks so much. Well, I also appreciate being invited here. And this is really an extension of a public-private. I love the collaboration with the public uh, universities as well as uh, with Davenport. And I also want to give credit to Steve uh, Ender because this, this is a great idea that, and it's all for the benefit of students. So a student who comes, we have about 1,200 students at Davenport from Grand Rapids Community College right now. And for those who have those credits, they'll be able to use Davenport credits to get their degree just like your students you know, who come to us, we use their credits, GRCC. It's such a natural partnership. And it was right in front of us, but it took, uh, I think, Steve to bring it to us. And, and I'm really proud to be in partnership with Ferris and Western and Grand Valley and Grand Rapids Community College. I think this is the beginning of, of really good collaboration. So I appreciate being here, too. Thank you. I appreciate our leadership for Lansing uh, locally uh, developed right here. There's no R or D uh, when it comes to education. It really is uh, about the uh, future state. It's about our children. It's about those uh, uh, folks that are coming to uh, our institutions for a better life. And I, I really do appreciate the leadership of, uh, of all of us around the table. Mike, good to see you here as well. This is uh, wonderful. Uh, what, what I see here is it's somewhat of a symbolism. I call it the 13131 corridor. And when you think about that, isn't that powerful? We talked about the diversity of, uh, of institutions, private, community college, universities with distinct missions. But that, that corridor is a healthy corridor, and then it uh, is informed really by the great uh, companies that we have here, the diversification of those companies that we have here in West Michigan. And if we can provide part of that talent and that talent dividend, we're doing our jobs. And that's uh, why I do say at the, at the get-go with our legislative leaders here, it's not an R and D, but it's all about our future. So thank you for being here and thank you for the work that we've done together. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the last, huh? <laughs> Save the best. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure that I can add a great deal to what has already been said, but I do want to emphasize, I think, what our two students said. And um, there's a lot of discussion today about uh, relationships and partnerships and the importance of that. And Steve, we acknowledge you and thank you for your leadership. But it really is and should be about our students. The institutions will be fine. Whether it be a community college, whether it be Western Michigan University, we will always be fine. 
but our future resides with our students, and it really needs to be about our students, and far less about institutions. Mike, your comment about not having a system was very appropriate. I've been in four states with a system of higher education, I can assure you. If we had a system of higher education, we would not be sitting here right now, and we would not be sitting here as rapidly as this has developed, because it's about people with like mind coming together to get the job done. And that's what this represents, that's what this is about. So I'm very, very pleased and very proud to be part of and to be associated with our colleagues here and also our partners in the corporate and the business uh, world and also remembering that uh, while we want to keep our eye on what the, the next job is there and the need for qualified personnel for those positions, we also want to remain always true to the nature of an education and an educated person. And so the humanities and the social sciences will also add in very, very important ways to the, uh, the overall credentials of a workforce. And we know that, and we've seen that over and over again. Thanks for our legislators for your uh, support. Uh, uh, this has not been the easiest time for higher education. I, I trust and I hope that you know that and we're working very, very hard. But we need your help, whether it's an R or D, as we move forward in the future. And I will say to you, um, it's becoming increasingly difficult to see the, the lack of attention uh, that we need for our funding for community colleges and higher education at the state level. So gentlemen, we ask for your support in the future and look at these as good signs, talk about them, be proud of them, and also help us because again, we're trying to help these young people, our future, to help you and our state grow. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to, first of all, Thank uh, everyone for having us here. We don't get to be in front of applause too often. <laughs> um, and I want to thank uh, President Eisler, uh, President Haas, and President Dunn, as well as uh, President Pappas for your commitment. It's not easy, we know, uh, for the four years to necessarily have to track down community college graduates or, or those who have transferred away from community colleges to find those kids and get them the credentials. A couple of years ago when President Obama issued his initiative to make sure that uh, we were a more educated nation, that we had that many more people with college degrees. He wasn't just insinuating the, the four years degree. He, he specifically noted uh, our associate's degrees and our, our certificate programs. And it's something that often get overlooked and it's extremely important uh, that you gentlemen all took the initiative to make sure that GRCC gets a completion. That's really important and uh, as President Hanson knows, that's important uh, for us from a statewide level. We wanna make sure people uh, get noted for those associate degrees and those certificate programs because those are very viable skill sets that those insinuate. And we've got a lot of kids out there in the university system right now who would still qualify for an associate's degree, but they didn't transfer to one of these fine institutions that have recognized that. So I appreciate you guys taking the initiative without us having to mandate something or put time money to it. You're just doing the right thing. And when we do more of that statewide, uh, we will be a better state. So I'm thankful that our Two students back there will benefit from this initially. I'm thankful for the commitment of you and your staff to doing all that. And it doesn't surprise me in the least that people up and down the 130, 131 corridor are leading the state in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to uh, say just one thing. I, I actually, being a father and, and my wife and my three sons were all GR community college. I don't know if I have my degree, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I do have a bachelor's degree. Right. 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 So yeah. my, my point is this, that with, with my three sons, two of them in the Air Force, trying to work their credits. Amazingly challenging uh, to say, I remember my, my oldest son who, who graduated from Grand Valley, just nothing personal, but they have to uh, graduate in the district I represent. I said, <laughs> so, uh, but my, my point, my point is, they've had the challenges, and, and how important it was to be able to 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 get the credits for something to transfer, something to pass was challenging. This is going to make it easier, and I'll tell you, as a parent, they want that degree, and and, and uh, it's it no matter if it's two year degree, three year degree, four year degree. And the bottom line is every, everybody's going to be better off because you have to have a minimum, I believe, in, in a skilled 
uh, course or a, a minimum of a bachelor's degree in this world. This is the way the real world works now. So uh, I can't thank you enough. And, and really, you know, we all talk about how it works, but being a 16-year city commissioner, being in the legislature, this side of the state actually, uh, uh, with all due respect over there, we actually work well together. They get it. That's why they're all at the table here today. And they should be applauded because we do work well together, and that's how you get things done for Michigan. I I don't have a lot to say, but I, I, I'm excited and encouraged by what I see here because I'm going to take it another step further. I want to see the seamless cooperation between K-12 and our, our community college to our higher level colleges. It's, <clears> it's important for our kids, and like you said, it's about our kids. It's about our future. It's about filling those high-tech jobs that we can't fill today. We have to change that quick, so this is just the beginning of great things in Michigan. Thank you. So, gentlemen, we have an agreement to sign. John, I'm going to start at your end of the table. And there are five agreements there. We each need to sign them all. We'll just pass them around the table. Why don't you you just, want us to? Just come on, John. Sign and start them. passing. Okay. <laughs> well, in the line with my name, right? That, that yeah. would be the appropriate yeah. spot. <laughs> Get specific instructions. Thank you, and we, we would invite questions at this time. Actually, the, the staffs from all five colleges are, are working those logistics now. Um, we hope to implement by the end of the summer. But what is so unique and wonderful about this relationship is that our colleagues at the other schools have determined that they can enter our Associate of Arts degree into their degree audit program. So rather than us having 3,000 people that somehow we've got to track down, we know where they are. They're on these campuses. The receiving schools will identify the students and then we will communicate back to them that they are now eligible for this degree. It, it is a very, very nice process. Well, uh, this actually was brought to our attention from Dr. Ender at the Community College Association, and we worked with the legislature and specifically our appropriations subcommittee, um, and they were very encouraged by this um, and potentially using this as a model. Um, and so what we would like to do is basically take the framework, the process, the logistics, and see if we can make this happen in other regions of the state, because clearly if it's happening here, it can happen in other places. Same kind of situations and issues uh, are, are uh, out there everywhere across the state, where we have students who are transferring from community colleges to other universities. 
and could, in fact, qualify for this reverse transfer. So we're hoping um, to, to replicate this statewide. On th this developed out of a really unique organization, which is Talent 2025, which is 60 West Michigan CEOs who have came to higher education and said, would you partner with us? Would you help us address how we raise the percent of college-educated graduates in West Michigan by 1% of year, a year? As a result of that, 13 college and university presidents are meeting on a regular basis. It's, I've never seen anything like this in my career. On Friday, I, I talked with each of the other community college partners in, in this West Michigan area with uh, Dale Nesbury at Muskegon Community College, with Bob Ferentino at Montcalm Community College, with Chuck Dillon at West Shore Community College. And each of them is also interested in the same program I extended to them our desire to work with them, and our hope is that by the summer we will have similar similar relationships with each of the community colleges in this area. So not only is this a model, there are plans to expand this immediately. But may I quickly add, and just to make sure everyone understands, is that the institutions represented here are not regionally based. We, we have students that come to us from throughout the state. 30% uh, of the students, uh, Southeast Michigan, are part of our population at Western Michigan University. So once we start down this path, the, the likelihood and the probability is that community colleges throughout the state mm -hmm. will want to see and would anticipate or expect similar kinds of things. I think that's just a, a given. And I don't believe there's any reason that we should exclude uh, others from the opportunity. If I may also, this is also a, a, an important economic development tool because while uh, when employers come to Michigan looking for an educated populace, they don't ask how many credits do most of your students, <laughs> most of your citizens have. They want to know how many have degrees, how many have certificates, things like that. This is a major initiative in bringing us forward in that. So it's a, a big economic development tool. And also keep in mind that when the taxpayers send money to GRCC, their hopes is a, a completion. And if a kid transfers early or transfers without filling out the proper paperwork to attain an associate's, uh, this is another opportunity to get that associate's. And, and that, again, that degree or that associate's is, is what employers and, and international companies are looking at. It's very important from that standpoint, aside from being the right thing to do educationally. Do you have one more for you? Yes. Yeah, I think it's a, a fair question. If you if you do not have a credential and this is your only credential, uh, you just added to your stock, if you will, when you go out looking for your first job. If you have two credentials, it says something else about you. Um, but if we want to think about changing the culture of West Michigan, it's about, at the end of the day, mothers and fathers having credentials that they then say to their children, you need to get these credentials too. And my goodness, it's gonna at least be an associate's degree if you want to be able to stay in Western Michigan and raise your family in a sustaining way. And I can just, if I could add to that, I can tell you in the last 20 years of me in politics, how many times I've talked to different people and they've said, you know, I just can't get back to school, but I'm 10 credits short of my bachelor's. Well, they all qualify for that degree, and having that degree, you know, is 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 really very important, whether it's the two-year or the four-year, but, right. but you'll have them. Right. We've all seen the studies that note that, you know, with a high school diploma, you can earn this much. With a certificate, you can earn this much. With a, an associate's this much, or, you know, a bachelor's that much. Well, at least if we can get them to this much, that's uh, an opportunity to get them to, to the next level as well, and that's important for all of us. I also think that the media coverage here today is, is very important. I'm just wondering how many hundreds of people are going to see the, the news tonight or read the newspaper tomorrow and say, you know, I didn't get my bachelor's degree, but I was there for two semesters 
maybe I do have that associate's degree. Let me get back in touch with these folks and see where do I stand. Um, so that you're going to help media folks tremendously by helping people understand how important these credentials are in today's world. So to add some clarity to that, is there a, is there a, 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 a how far back do these, does this go? But it, what we are being advised to be very careful with is the notion of 45 credits earned at our institution as far as credits being transferred back. And I don't know how far the accreditors would let us go back with this program. I just, I would be guessing and I don't want to do that. But I certainly would think several years. It's we were founded in 1866, so we'll <laughs> <laughs> I get the drifter where you want to go. That's terrific. Great answer. I, I do have maybe this uh, one of the uh, in comments, but uh, with Fred here and representing the business community, I think in, in many respects he's validating what we're doing, and in turn we're providing him the talent and the ability to be even more vibrant as a, as a Cascade Engineering or at whatever company that we have here or those, as uh, Representative Janescu was saying, those that we can attract here. So I feel really, really positive about our future when you can bring all these folks together for one thing in mind, Michigan. I'd like to extend that also. The first time we came together was last fall. Uh, and we are very excited about this cooperation with in West Michigan. We look forward to more announcements of this nature where we help students earn their degree. That's the reason we came together. Right. Any further questions? Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.